So, hi everybody, welcome to uh, this week's coaches meeting. Um, again, a big thanks to everybody for, for um, keeping up with us, coming on every couple weeks here, and also um, for everything you're doing outside of these meetings at practices and working with your athletes and families. Um, again, we can't do this without that partnership, and so we really appreciate that. And obviously, we want to give you guys the time to um, get some information as well as ask some questions tonight um, from that side of things. So, uh, what I want to start off with, Nicole, I'll put you on the spot if you're okay. Um, we're going to start off with we had our first in-person competition um, since we started the return to play. So this last Sunday we had our uh, state golf tournament. And so, Nicole, if you want to just give us a, a nice recap of how that went and all, and all that type of stuff. Yeah, um, it was a great day. We had 27 athletes and unified partners out there. Thankfully, we had a dry day for golf after all the rain last week. Um, but this was our first chance to test all the protocols that we've been making you do at one of our events. Um, so we had a, a nice flow through registration with the screening process. We had an education table for special smiles. Um, and then all our golfers got out on the course and, um, and competed. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do any awards in person. So as you guys saw Dawn's background, we did a virtual award ceremony following the event, um, which went well. That is recorded for any golfers or families that missed that. You guys can definitely go back and watch that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a fun day to, to finally be reunited um, with our Special Olympics community, even though it looked a little different and we couldn't see any smiling faces behind the masks. Um, I think everybody had a great day out on the course. And it just happened to work out where with golf, it seemed to be one of the easier sports to kind of, uh, well, it's definitely one of the easier sports to practice social distancing with the, with the size of the course and, and the smaller groups that go out naturally. Um, but it was a good test run for, for the check-in procedures and all that type of stuff. Uh, is there any, anybody on the call that, was, that were there and they wanted, would like to share their experience from uh, Sunday? Sure. Hi, this is Kate. I'm a unified partner. My daughter, Allison, golfs. It was a wonderful day. It went smoothly from check-in to getting our carts to getting out on the course, uh, to having enough volunteers. That was perfect weather. It was a little bit chilly, but that was all good. Um, obviously not the same as we've done competitions in the past for golf, but it, 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 hey, we're competing again and the athletes just having fun and the smiles on their faces and being able to see each other again well, was wonderful. So kudos, kudos to Special Olympics. We did it. Perfect. Thanks for sharing, Kate. I don't know if there's anybody else that was uh, at that event. Um, I know there's West Dallas athletes, but I don't know if Tyler's around. Um, Hey, Sharon, you're on mute if you're, if you're trying to say. <laughs> Tyler and Claudia are at punt, pass, and kick practice. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So I'm sitting in, so I'll ask if I have a question. Otherwise, I'll be still. Okay, sounds good. Um, but yeah, like I said, we had a, we had that trial run with that event, and we had the trial run with the uh, virtual awards ceremony. There's some good things that uh, that I think uh, happened that for that uh, award ceremony, and and then um, as always with all of this, we appreciate any feedback that people had of uh, things that uh, they liked, things that they didn't like, things they'd like to see. Um, we're still working on some other aspects to try to make those even better than and then uh, we had our first run. So. Uh, a reminder that those virtual award ceremonies are the Tuesday after either the competition or the uh, uh, results entry deadline if you're doing in practice. Um, so I believe our next one is in, in two weeks uh, and that one is, I believe it's Bocce on the 29th. Um, and then we'll have one uh, 29th and then the, the following two weeks as well for the events that we have coming up. So um, again, uh, you know, Anybody who's who are, who are a part of that, feel free to send us any input that you had. Um, that, that'd be appreciated. Um, the uh, next thing I want to touch base about is, so we, we went through the phasing request a lot with golf. We made a lot of smaller groups, so that made it easy. Uh, just a reminder that for those who are looking to do in-person competition for um, uh, punt, pass, and kick, 
or cornhole. Uh, we're still planning on hosting that. I think we're still good to go for October 10th. So if you're planning on turning in a registration form for punt, pass, and kick or cornhole, that uh, September 23rd should be your goal to get, get to phase two. So you're putting phasing requests in for those sports. Um, if you have an issue where maybe you haven't um, hit your practice threshold or, or if you're if you're in another issue that would prevent you from getting in on the 23rd, uh, please reach out to us and let us know. Um, but uh, we want to work with you a little bit, but um, that should be your goal for if you want to come to the in-person competition. Knowing even if you're going to still be practicing with 10 or less people, you'll be going to a competition that's going to have more than 10 people, which is why we, why we if you're going to be in person, we, we want you to be in phase two. So. Um, that's just kind of a reminder on that. Um, one thing I want to give you an update and then we're going to kind of go around um, and, and share. So I mentioned on the last call, and actually I should probably call my chat. Um, but on our last chat a call, we were, I was talking, talking about how the indoor sports uh, rules and information and all that stuff would be put on the website. Um, it has been submitted. We're just kind of on a little bit of delay for the for it to actually get up on the website. It, I was told it should be up sooner than later. Uh, we were actually I was hoping to possibly get up today, um, but all the rules and um, the rules and the uh, training plans for the for the indoor sports should be getting up soon. And the other thing that we're changing on the website is that we're going to put that information not only on the return to play page but underneath the individual sports. So if you're used to going to the sports offers page to pull up your rules and all that information, we are gonna put some, put the information there. And there's a lot of the sports that we're offering that will have uh, some videos for you to see what it looks like if you're having questions about how to set up a practice and all that. So, um, but since it's not quite up yet, what I wanted to do is, um, is go around for the indoor sports SRTs and kind of just give a, a brief overview of what's going on with that sport any information people need to know. And like I said, hopefully we'll have all that information on the website here um, in the really near future. So I'll, uh, I'll start with uh, um, Amber and Haley, if you guys want to start sharing about uh, volleyball skills, um, uh, what you have planned for that and kind of an overview of the sport. Sure, we have, well, can you guys hear me okay? Is it echoing? I don't know why it's doing that. <laughs> And Haley's not on. She's having computer oh, issues. Gotcha. Is it's it better now? now? Okay. Um, so with volleyball skills, we have a virtual option as well. So if people don't feel comfortable um, competing at agency practices or coming to a competition, we have um, three different skills that they can do virtually and submit the scores that way. Um, we also have um, three different um, skills that they could be working on. So there's a VSAT that will be posted online that you guys can um, fill out. It's three different skills as well. So it's the same three skills for the um, in-person competition that we're hoping to have on November 7th at the Milwaukee Sting Center in Menominee Falls. That's the same place where um, state volleyball is held. Um, then we also have the same three skills that you guys can do at practice. So if you feel like it, it's not safe or you don't want to come on November 7th, you can submit scores. Um, all the qualifying scores are due by October 23rd. So all, all the specifics will be up on the website as soon as possible. So if you guys have any questions, feel free, feel free to outreach to me. Um, otherwise, they'll be on the website. And I will, uh, I'll just add on to that. The registration deadlines that they, that uh, Amber is sharing and that we'll continue to share with some of the stuff is also um, what we're using as our medical deadline. Uh, so the deadline for any updated medicals to get in uh, for that sports season, plus the, the COVID-19 release forms. Um, please make sure you're, you're, you're getting those in for not, for anybody who's participating in practice, athletes, coaches, unified partners, all of them would, would need to have a, a, a COVID release form. And again, you can submit that to the, COVID email address, which is just COVID at specialolympicswisconsin.org. And I'll, somebody will put that in the chat at some point here. Um, so the 23rd would be your registration deadline and also your medical deadline for volleyball skills. The other one that we're looking at um, doing for that same in-person event, hopefully at the same venue, we're kind of working on some of that stuff right now, 
it would be is rings, which is a new sport. And I don't think I have Carla or Jody on um, tonight, so I can kind of give a quick uh, overview of that. Um, so uh, rings, actually, I, I pulled it up on. Let's see if I, I'm going to try to do a screen share here, <laughs> so you can get to see what it looks like. Um, so um, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so the, the the this is the rings uh, setup. So there's, there's the um, the pegboard as well as um, as the rings. Um, the idea is that you'll be there. You'd be standing uh, 12 feet from the rings. Uh, you have four chances. The uh, and then the, the points is dependent on uh, which uh, peg you get it on. So we are we are hoping to have this, um, like I said, as a part of an in-person option, as well on. Um, November 7th. There's also, I believe there's a, there's the virtual option for this as well. Um, the, and, and the registration deadline and the, um, um, the registration deadline and the medical deadline for that is the same as volleyball skills. So it'd be October 23rd is what we'd be looking at for, for rings. And so um, there's a lot more, I guess, in the rules and all that stuff, rather than going through all of that, like I said, it will be up shortly. Um, but um, that is kind of a, just a general idea for people who are wondering what the pegboard looks like in the rings. That's what we're dealing with. So. I should, before we move on, does anybody have any questions for volleyball skills or rings? All right. Uh, Nicole and Michaela, um, do you want to do an overview for bowling? I know that's what a lot of people are, are kind of be jumping into in the indoor season. Um, yes. So, Michaela, do you want to take it? Sure. So, we have a virtual option, which is our 10 pin challenge, which is 10 different skills that will help with your bowling and physical fitness. Um, it's just, there'll be videos of, it that explains them on the website. And then for our league play, it runs for six weeks of actual competition. The first week is your handicap week. So, uh, we don't need any qualifying scores. Uh, registration forms are going to be due October 11th. And then there's going to be, a, on the website, there's our rules where halfway through we're going to create the divisions and then the final scores will be an average of all of the weeks put together, plus your handicap. Anything else I need to talk about, Nicole? Um, I don't think so. So we'll calculate handicap and handicap will change week to week. Um, you guys can either host a formal practice or athletes can go to the bowling alley on their own and just send you scores to then submit to us um, if you're not comfortable hosting a full practice. Um, and we're encouraging everyone to do the 10 pin challenge, not just if you want to compete virtually. Um, it will be a great way for athletes to uh, gain physical fitness that will help them with their bowling. Um, and there was something, oh, uh, the other thing, yeah, so Michaela said the, the registration deadline is October 11th, and just to repeat what Jason said, that's both for medicals and COVID waivers and the registration form, which will just be the roster, no qualifying scores, but that's also, um, we will be offering unified doubles and teams uh, this year, so if you have a unified partner that is participating, they need to be registered as a Class A volunteer by that date, and also have the COVID waiver in. Um, so I think that's it. Yeah, and what's waiting to be loaded on the website, there are going to be videos uh, along with the, um, uh, for the 10 pin challenge. Um, so for kind of instructional videos, starring some people that you see on this, uh, on this call. So uh, keep an eye out for those. Um, and that kind of segues into uh, the, our, what well, I was going to remind her for virtual options that we do have virtual options for all our sports. Um, they currently the registration forms are on the return to play website and the, the ones that are up right now are for the fall outdoor sports. Um, the um, athletes who are participating in practice, they can also do virtual um, competitions on their own. They can double dip, they can triple dip. I know there's some people who uh, were golfed at, golfed at the in-person event. They're going to do the in-practice golf event and then they can very well do the golf skills and get, get the awards for all three. Um, so we highly encourage if people are, are interested in participating in these sports to do that. Um, I'd also t uh, remind people that the idea behind the virtual ones, um, too, is to get people who may not be 
able to or are ready to come back to practice to do those. So if you, even if your agency is practicing right now in any of those sports, um, please uh, feel free to, to keep those who are, are currently inactive involved by, set, by sending them that information so they can participate as well. Um, we do have, uh, I think cornhole has been our most popular virtual option so far for these fall outdoor seasons, uh, but just highly recommend continue to pass it along to families. Um, a lot of them are, 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 are things you can do at home and, um, and something that they can do with siblings. Um, we don't just limit that to athletes. You can register as a unified partner or family member and do those, uh, do those events along with them. So um, for those, like I said, again, who aren't at practices or even if they are at practices, I would highly encourage that you continue to pass those opportunities along. Um, and maybe that might be a good way to keep people involved with Special Olympics in the program. Um, the other question I was just going to have is a general question. If anybody had any ideas um, as we try to continue to reach those people who aren't participating with these virtual options, does anybody have any ideas of, of things we could do um, to reach those people that we currently aren't doing? Um, I know we kind of are going through the agencies right now and then having on the website. So a lot of agencies aren't doing um, bowling with COVID-19, how are we able to participate in in-person bowling? Are we able to go to the bowling alley and bowl on our own? Yeah, so um, that, that's part of it. You would still have to register with an agency, so we still have to get you connected with an agency, but you do not need to be practicing with that agency on a weekly basis, you can go to the bowling alley on your own and then be submitting scores on a weekly basis. But we're having that submit or through can't... an agency so we can keep track of that. So. Mike, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Um, and that, Mike, actually that question reminded me to mention something about bowling. Um, earlier we talked about how you have to be in phase two to compete in in-person events. Uh, you do not need to be in phase two to compete in bowling since we're not having an in-person option. So you, um, <laughs> so you can still be in phase one and compete if you're not meeting in a practice that's larger than 10 people. So um, the phasing is less important for that unless you are actually gonna meet with more than 10 people. Uh, we can still accept scores for, for teams in phase one for league bowling play. So I just wanted to just add a reminder. Okay, uh, thanks for the I have several <laughs> questions. Okay. Um, they're all bowling questions. <laughs> um, it says in the material that we have so far on bowling that we'll be bowling for seven weeks from October 19th to December 13th is more than seven weeks. Nine. It's nine weeks. Uh, we skip a week for Thanksgiving and um, that wording is so the first week is October 19th through the 25th is week one and then the last week will be um, what would that be? December 6th through the 13th will be the last week. And then we skip Thanksgiving. That's still, I think, eight weeks. The, okay. the, the scores are due starting, the first time the scores will be due is October 25th. So it's, it's technically scores will be due October 25th through December 13th. Okay, um, if we have athletes that are bowling with a league and they're typically bowling three games, which of those three games are they reporting? Yeah, um, you can send in whichever, uh, the two best games would be fine. I know a lot of teams are used to practicing three games a week um, in a typical year. So if you still want to have athletes do three games a week, that's totally fine. Um, we just know that some agencies will be limited in terms of how much time they have at the bowling alley. And if they're in, staying in phase one, getting all the athletes through will take some time. Um, so we didn't want to lose anybody by requiring three games. So you can still bowl three games and just send in your best two scores. Okay. And also, I mean, this is 2019 rules, most likely from bowling, and we were not alternating lanes, but in league, they do alternate lanes, so that's okay. I'm assuming that's going to be okay. Well, yeah, I mean, you yeah. can do it either way that you want to do it. I mean, 
if you want to alternate lanes, that's fine. Yeah, for COVID safety precautions, I would probably say it's just best for an athlete to stay on one lane, um, just because we're asking you to disinfect like the table and stuff like that before they start bowling. So it may just be best if they stay in one spot. But if you are used to for league bowling, alternating lanes, that's totally fine. Um, I, the COVID information goes to the website or does it go to Sam and then the coach and volunteer one goes to Brittany? I mean, I, that's what I thought before. Can the COVID release forms, they can all go to the COVID email. So COVID at specialympicswisconsin.org. Okay. And then Sam and I both have access to that. So that way we can kind of sort through stuff. So that way you don't have to worry about who do I send this to? It just send it to one place and we'll, we'll sort it out on our end. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. And then I noticed Zachary has had his hand up. So I just want to make sure we get to him. You can unmute there's, yourself, Zach. Uh, there's also a question about Bachi and Janet in the chat. Yeah. Um, my question is, our agency is like, we're not doing like bowling, we're doing like basketball. Basketball skills, is there anything up to date on that? Up to date as far as what we're doing for basketball? Yeah, we're, yeah. What we're, yeah. so what we're currently working on, we're, we're still kind of processing, going through that process of planning and all that type of stuff. We're, we are most likely going with a, a, more of a skills option to eliminate some of the contact from team basketball. Um, we will hopefully have some more information for that in the, in the next coming weeks here. Um, I will tell you from a, from a scheduling standpoint, um, we are looking at keeping our, our, our normal dates for that type of thing. So we'd still be looking at competitions in February and March, but what that final rules and, and setup was going to look like, we're still kind of finalizing that. Um, but, um, but at, at this point we're, we're leaning more towards skills just to prevent some of the, the contact that we would uh, have issues with, with, with COVID currently. Okay. Um, we were thinking about starting that uh, regular basketball this year because we were like all practicing at, at skills. I understand now because of COVID, but we were like really working hard towards getting a team going for a and stuff like that. But um, other thing is, I see like other teams are like practicing every, every year. Is there um, uh, like a period where you start earlier or do we have to wait until the end? I think your question, so do you have to wait for the sports season to start the to start practicing in the sports season? Is, is that, I think that's where you're kind of getting at. Um, so you can start practicing whenever it works for your agency. So I, you know, like I said, we, I think last coaches, me, coaches, me, we encourage people to uh, start bowling practice if they're if they if they're wanting to get to a larger group you can start practice now um, there's no um, limit on when you can or how early you can start practicing for these things uh, the our sports seasons are, are purely based around the competitions so uh, the competitions that we're going to be offering like I said like they said for bowling there's that that seven week span in, uh, starting in October that they're going to be doing um, uh, the bowling, uh, doing bowling league is, and then like the competitions for volleyball skills and rings are going to be in November. So that's kind of like the end point, if you will. Um, but you feel free to practice whenever um, it works for your agency to get back. And when you have a venue available and, and you feel like you can do things safely. But, but we need to know. I mean, yes. Start. Yep. And start and that you would start in phase one at whatever new sport. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, because uh, like um, basketball skills is what you write in January, but um, our our agency does that. But I was like wondering if is that like the actual head quick place where you start, or can can you um like start like in October, get it like worked out and in the shape and then ready for the season. If, yeah, so if you're, I w it's going to be uh, dependent on when your agency wants to start practicing. We don't, we, we don't limit when you can start. It's going to be based on your agency. 
exact. So. Oh, so it doesn't have to. There's no like time or much special. I want to fix this just between like the coaches if they have enough coaches that can like actually do the sports. It, yeah. It, yep. So the, your your coaches and your agency will decide that, and then it will they they will practice up to the the competition. So. Um, I was gonna. It was it, Michaela. Were you? Would you be able to answer the bocce question that's in the for us? Yeah, I messaged her, but we can just make them as singles instead of doubles. If you just want to let me know which athlete is not going to be doing the second round of scores. Perfect. All right, Brittany, if you want to take a. Yeah. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, Nicole already mentioned, but I just want to say it again. Um, for all unified partners, um, they must be not only turn in their COVID release form, but they must be class A if they're um, practicing with athletes. Um, so it is, I know it's a tough process sometimes to get all the pieces in. Um, so have people start doing that sooner than later so we can get all that processed in time for the in-person event. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, along that same lines, I'm now including a COVID release form uh, report, I guess you'd call it, um, along with Sam's um, weekly athlete report. So you should be seeing a roster of all of your coaches and volunteers um, that have turned in the COVID release form. Um, if you don't see a name on there that they have turned it in, it's likely that it's because they're not class A, um, but you can feel free to reach out to me to confirm. Um, another thing in the chat, I did put um, the two links um, to our website, which I've always included in our wrap-up emails, um, the one with the return to play information with all the rules, but then just a general COVID page as well. Um, and I just wanted to point out, we do have some new uh, like mask wearing resources for you, um, some that are a little more wordy for um, coaches just to give a better idea and then some with some nice pictures that show the proper way to wear a mask. So if that's helpful for you, um, feel free to look at those. And then lastly, um, I just want to give an update on SOFIT and where we're at because I know there's been a lot of groups that have been interested and um, we've been kind of pushing it off. So just want to give a quick update. So um, I finally was able to get the training done um, by SOI so that I have all my ducks in a row. So now we're ready to move forward. Um, but we are hosting Train the Trainers. Um, so um, myself and um, a partner that I'm working with will be training um, all of our site coordinators on how to run SOFIT in this virtual environment because it's going to look a little different than it has in the past, um, as well as um, the data collection that needs to be done and the best way to go about that. Um, those start next week, so I really need to know if you are interested in SOFIT or not, so we can um, have you join us in one of those Train the Trainers. Um, and on a similar note, we are also interested in collecting information from athletes that are not in SOFIT. Um, so any coaches um, that may be interested in helping us with this project, um, we're looking on collecting information um, from athletes at three different time periods. Um, you would also join one of these train the trainer calls um, just to learn a little bit more about how to go about collecting that information. Um, I would love as many people that I can get to join us. Um, the more information we can gather, the better. It's going to just help us um, improve our programming. That's really the ultimate goal. So um, I will include a link um, in my follow up email tomorrow that is just a short little survey. Um, whether you're interested in SOFIT or not, it has um, train the trainer information, you can sign up and get more information. Um, but I just wanted to put that plug in for you guys to kind of mull on that. Um, and you'll have more information tomorrow in the email. And I think that's all I had, unless if anybody had questions. Uh, one, just one quick thing. Um, we will be adding a fitness competition um, to the indoor season. So it'll be run just like a sports competition, but it'll just be fitness-based activities. Um, none of it will require equipment. Think things like push-ups, sit-ups, things like that. Um, I'm still waiting. This is coming from SOI, so I'm still waiting for some of the details from them, but as soon as I have it, it'll go up on the website, and um, I'll let you all know.
Um, does anybody have any questions uh, for anything we went over or anything that, they, that they've experienced going through practices or getting things set up? Let's see, Jake Casper, I see you have your hand up. You have to unmute yourself though. I was just saying, can I say something? Go ahead. I just heard from Elisa tonight. I think County just put a new ruling out. But what was that? Dane County just put a new ruling out as of today. Okay. Do we? Uh, I haven't heard. What is what is it, Jake? No bigger sports. Period for Special Olympics in Dane County, including Madison West, too. Well, we'll we'll have to investigate that. I don't think that Dane County would put out a specific order on about Special Olympics. Um, so we'll we'll take a look at that. Probably got people. I, I know we sent. Out, I know Nicole sent out some specific information for those programs in Dane County. About uh, about not being able to get out of phase one based on county yeah. ordinances, but that's that's something we look at for every county when they are looking to get to be a or every program when they look to get to the next phase. So, but we'll look into that, Jake. We'll look and see what 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 if what if there's a new rolling out. We'll take a look at what the wording is for how it affects us. So, and we'll update those those programs. Uh, Brittany, not to. Put you back in the spot, Mike. Did, Mike Schultz did mention. Do you want to mention the uh, run series? Oh sure. Um, so a couple things. So if you haven't already, um, I would love for you guys to join um, our fitness at home Facebook group. We have shared, and it's actually on the website too. So if you don't have Facebook, don't worry. Um, but we have shared some 5K training plans. There's different options for running, walking, biking, and wheelchair. Um, there's also different lengths of time. So there's a four week, six week and eight week just to give folks different options if they need longer time to get there. That's um, different time lengths for you. Um, and then if you do one of those and shoot me an email, and let me know that you're doing that. You get a $5 off code for registration for the virtual run series, which is taking place um, basically the entire month of October, starting October 3rd. Um, each week is a different um, why, like you're running for inclusion, running for acceptance, running for joy, and running for champions. Um, I probably said them out of order, but those are the, <laughs> those are the ones. Um, you can sign up for one week. Um, you can sign up for multiple. I signed up for all four. Um, I also made a team, so you can make your own team, but if you need a team to join, you can join mine, um, and it should be a good time. It's all virtual, so you're running on your own. And it doesn't have to be a 5K. You can do more or less, um, whatever works for you. But um, it should be fun. Right. Um, let me see. I'm trying to look and see if there's anything else. Um, Zachary had asked about young athletes training. I know uh, Jen is continuing to do her SOE Live stuff for some virtual um, young athletes training, but also working with programs and also at home kits. So if anybody does have people interested in young athletes, we do currently have programming going on. Um, and I know that there's, uh, she has her plan for the return for in person as well. So um, if you do have young athletes, I would recommend either emailing that COVID uh, email address or emailing Jenna directly. Um, and we can get you, if you have any questions, if you have never gotten in contact with her, we can also direct you her way as well, um, if you email any of us. Um, so that was one of those um, as well. So uh, the last thing I, I wish I, I, I forgot to ask last time, but how many people are currently practicing right now um, in any sport? See some hands up. Perfect. Uh, we have, I think we are, I think we, last time I checked, we're around 24 agencies that are, are practicing currently uh, with obviously some more coming up um, as bowling gets going. Um, I just could give a, a minute and if you want to share, they can share. Um, how um, how are uh, anybody have anything that they would like to share for like what's working, what's not working, you know, uh, as far as your practices go, screening, um, what's you know anything that's going on in practices? Okay. 
we had our first practice West Madison um, for bowling and we had our eight athletes and two coaches there and with a small group um, doing temperature check and the questions made it go smoothly um, because it wasn't uh, like we had normally we had in previous years 30 to 40 athletes that would have been a lot tougher and not so smooth so um, we had most athletes had no problem with the six foot social distancing just our oldest athlete had to be reminded um, we basically bowled every other lane um, that's the way they do it at Schwagler's and then we had one athlete sit on the lane that they're not bowling on the other one on the athlete they're bowling on so every athlete had their own lane to sit at for the entire time so it, it worked out well and uh, that was our first session and I'm starting another two sessions um, the second session this week and then the third session. So I'll be spending probably six hours a Saturday at the Bowling Alley for the, for the duration of the fall. Well, th well, thank you for doing that. And that, that sounds, that sounds great. It sounds like a good first practice. Um, and, and it's perfectly, I think it's perfectly normal. I think a lot of people would have the same experience with having to remind an athlete uh, for, for the social distancing aspect. I mean, going out to the golf event, I think we were reminding ourselves uh, social distancing a little bit. You get excited being around people. So <laughs> I completely understand but, that. Especially if you haven't seen them for a while. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I think that was one of the takeaways that we got from golf was the amount of people who are just happy to have that social outlet. So um, yeah. that's great. That, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dan, you mind talking a little bit about your punt, pass, and kick practice? I'm kind of curious to see how that's going. Sure. Yeah, we had to uh, split it up into two different groups um, because of the size. Uh, but even with that, we're finding, you know, because you just have the two coaches uh -huh. and between the, the spotting of the ball and the measuring and the wiping the balls off, yeah. um, there's a lot of just kind of standing around for the athletes, which I think is unavoidable. Um, but they seem to be rolling with it okay. Um, and it's working out pretty well considering. Um, I, I think the athletes are basically – happy to be back doing something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of the biggest drawback is it's so time consuming that the athletes spend the greatest part of our, our session waiting for their turn. Yeah. Amber, um, do you want to talk about um, the combine type practice that one of your agencies ran for flag football, just kind of as like a best practices, how they added that element in? Sure. So they were used to playing obviously flag football and they wanted some more element to than just the punt, pass, and kick with the three stations. Um, they also wanted to get their athletes moving because they said a lot of them have gained the COVID-15. So in between their skills that they were doing, um, they set up an agility. So um, they tried, they put what you would say are um, like tires, but they used hula hoops. So the, you know, the guys would have to go through that. Um, they just had a couple other like um, agility drills in between like the ladders and stuff like that to get them moving so there wasn't so much standing around in between um, doing the different skills which was pretty cool and I think the athletes liked it because um, it got them moving like I said instead of just sitting around so I think incorporating maybe some agility or fitness into your practices that works too. So they kind of just do that independently Nope. So that was one of the stations that they would rotate through. So they had four different stations and one of them was the agility station. Okay. Cause we only have two coaches available because of the numbers and okay. both the coaches have to be on whatever the event is we're doing. Like if we're doing pass, the coaches have to be involved in pass because we're measuring and wiping balls off. So any other event would ha almost have to be done independently by the athletes because we don't have any other coach to man that. Okay. Well, this was a bigger agency and they spaced themselves really well. Um, but maybe, you know, in between one of your punt pass or kicks, you could take, you know, a little time out and do some agility. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking too, you could like, um, maybe at like the beginning of practice, demonstrate a handful of different exercises, you know, th simple thing, jumping jacks, high knees, I don't know, something like that. So then while they're waiting, maybe they rotate through those types of things. And Amber, I'm assuming that group you're talking about is in phase two and, and Dan, you're still in phase one. Correct. Yeah, we're yeah. in phase one. 
Dan, I've been meaning to reach out to you for a while now, but um, we'll connect tomorrow. But one of the things about phase two, I think, is there's a little, um, it's a little less strict on indirect contact. Um, so you could have some athletes passing the ball and, and stuff like that, where that indirect contact is okay. Um, and as long as everything in your county looks good depending on what's going on um, in your community um, and how many athletes you would be increasing practice to um, we could definitely look at moving you guys to phase two so we'll we'll connect tomorrow dan okay yeah that sounds good and having some of those ability stations on the side that that might be worth a shot too mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. definitely. And, and i know i know that team milwaukee program i mean they, that that's the one that was doing the agility once had I mean, they have they had more coaches available, but they when they got people in, they put them in groups and had that 50 meter separation, um, and then just kept those groups together so there was no commingling. So that was a way where you would have the ability to have more than just the two coaches and the and the eight athletes, as long as you have that 50 50 meter distance that you're keeping apart. So that's something that you can keep in mind too. I just don't know. I mean, it, it all all depends on what your practice space looks like. Um, not everybody has a huge field to be able to do something like that, um, but the, the good news is that 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 the way that um, uh, the punt pass and kick field is set up, um, those fields are about 50 meters. So it kind of gives you a nice visualization as far as how far they need to be apart. So. I, for Marshfield, we've been, um, we actually moved to phase two and we have our local it's a park uh, with a ball diamond and other area amongst it so we're able to spread out and do um actually the cornhole like way over in one corner the punt pass and kick in the middle and then the bocce over by the other fence that kind of gives the um opportunity for the athletes when they're standing around for the punt pass and kick to go do the cornhole. Even if they aren't gonna score in it, it just gives them something else to do. We do fortunately have enough coaches to do that. And then the other thing that we've set up is I've made backpacks for each of those stations with cleaning supplies and extra masks and all that. So even if they're transferring from place to place, hand sanitizer, we're able to clear, clean everything and keep it safe. Um, and it's going very well. And yes, the athletes are very happy. It's just getting cool. Um, we're doing this in the evening and with um, this doing it this late in the year, it's starting to get cool for a lot of the sports at this point. But otherwise it's going well. And I was, I was gonna mention, so uh, Michaela had visited your practice, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she had mentioned, were you guys doing screenings uh, like as people pulled yeah. up while they're in their cars? Yeah. In, in the parking lot, right out in the parking lot, there was two of us went right to the people's cars. We didn't even, we had given them orders. They couldn't get out of the car until we knew that they were symptom free. So, yep. I, I thought that but he dropped off and then we didn't have something to do with them. So <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that, I thought that when I heard that, I thought that was a great idea just as a way of, of like, yeah, preventing people from being dropped off yeah. and then, yeah. And then just not, yeah, that's awesome. And that's a great idea. The same thing when we start the bowling, it's they're going to enter there from the one parking lot on the one side of the bowling alley. And we'll do the same thing for that is that they have to pass the screening and the bowling alley is shutting down to the general public for us. So we're just going to be able to have our athletes in the alleys um, easily be able to social distance, even with the number of athletes we have. So that's, that's great. That, that's great to be able to have that resource. But, and at least I think it's good for sharing that because that's, that's a good best practice to, to share for people if they're looking at yeah. ways to, to, to avoid that yes. issue. So, yes. I just wanted to real quick, um, Dan got me thinking about, fitness and practices and stuff. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. Um, so um, hopefully this is a resource for um, more than just Dan um, to use, but I posted in the chat and I can include it um, in the follow-up email, but um, SOI came out with some fitness cards. Um, they're different exercises and they're actually broken out into five different levels. So there's um, exercises for every, every level of fitness. Um, but that might be a good resource to pull some exercises that you could do at practice because um, none of them require equipment. Um, but that would be a good way. It explains how to do them. It, um, it has a picture of an athlete doing the exercise itself. Um, and if they're doing them at home, there's actually some videos too to show you how to do it. But um, the fitness cards could be a good place to start if you're not sure what to 
what to do. Great. Uh, last call for anybody who wants to share or have any questions. So what about parents at sporting events and practices? What do you guys recommend on parents? Not, are they allowed there? Are they not? I, I would just, as long if they're, if, I would say it's probably more likely that they're not going to be there. They do count in the, to your number for if you're, if you have to be in 10 or less, anybody who's there, whether it's a coach or a spectator, uh, would need to, uh, would count on that number and they would go through that screening process. So that's why I believe a lot of programs are, are going just coaches and athletes because we don't have huge, we don't have an ability to go over 10 for the most part for a lot of practice. All right. Well, thank you again for taking the time tonight. And again, thank you for, for all of you doing such a great job um, of, of going through the working with the policies, but also finding your own ways to, to make it work out for your agency. So we really appreciate that. Again, it was great to see those who we saw on Sunday and we look forward to seeing more people uh, at the upcoming uh, events and, and award ceremonies and the celebration ceremonies. Um, we'll be back uh, you know, we'll do this in two more weeks and uh, we'll have, we'll be closer to an in-person competition. So I'm sure there'll be a couple more questions that come up during that time frame. but uh, thanks everybody and, and have a great night.